There won't always be a full-time team of horticulturists here, so the plants will have to fend for themselves. With sustainability at the heart of the new city's agenda, all plants must survive on seawater alone, and they must reproduce unaided. So the choices were that we had uh, guys go around and pollinate the plants, or as Ron suggested, and I thought quite bizarrely initially, was bring bees. The bees have settled onto the island and are playing their part in the pollination of the new generation of salt-tolerant plants. They are also providing the site with a welcome spin-off, home-produced honey. Water quality is paramount to the environmental success of the project. It ensures that marine life and the plants remain healthy, and it provides a pleasant waterside lifestyle. But the vast distances that the water will have to travel pose a big problem. The Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research has been involved throughout, providing an independent review of the project's design. As we further went into phases three and four, we started to find some areas of stagnant areas inside, and that's where we started to introduce the, the idea of introducing tidal gates to help force the water in a certain direction and improve the flushing. The solution is simple, but ingenious. The incoming flood tide will open the gates at one end to allow water into a three-kilometer section of the A3 lagoon. When the tide ebbs, the weight of the water in the impounded area will close the upstream gates, but at the same time force the downstream gates open, thus directing the trap water to flow round the system. It's like a natural pump. Without the tidal gate, the, the, the flushing rate will be poor and therefore the, the water quality will be uh, in, in a bad shape. The culverts that will house the gates have already been built. So what we have behind us here are the three northern tidal gate locations with the culverts that are constructed to, to house these. Uh, these gates are fundamentally important to the whole of phases three, four and five in terms of water exchange and the uh, maintaining of the water quality. Without these gates, we would never be able to get the tidal exchange so far into the project, up to six kilometers. It's a simple concept, but a brilliant piece of engineering innovation. However, deciding who was to build the gates and where proved to be a tougher call for the team. We ended up selecting uh, a company called Tima from Cardiff in South Wales. Um, and clearly, they were able to demonstrate to us that apart from being competitive, had a very clear track record of manufacturing and installing hydraulic structures. Now, that was key to us. Without these functioning properly, the whole flushing regime of this lagoon system could fail, and that would mean the project would fail. Here in Wales, the gates are being fabricated prior to shipping out to Kuwait. They will be crucial to the success of the entire project, ensuring circulation of water around the lagoons. There are six gates in all, and they took six months to build. Each gate is seven meters high, six meters wide, and weighs 10 tons. To fit with Sea City's commitment to sustainability, these gates have been designed to need little maintenance during their 50-year lifetime. Each of the gates has been specially covered with a thermally applied aluminium coat to protect them from the highly saline waters. 